Last week, you learned that there are five major requirement areas that must be satisfied by a battery management system. So far, you've learned about requirements one through three in more detail. In this lesson, we consider requirement four, which has to do with performance management. And this includes computing estimates of state of charge and available power and having an ability to balance or equalize cells in a battery pack. Fundamentally, applications using battery packs need to know two basic quantities that describe the present state of the battery. The first is how much energy is available in the battery pack. The second is how much power is available in the immediate future. And this I try to illustrate by drawing a glass of soda and a straw, and I'll explain what I mean by this as I continue. Knowledge about how much energy is available in a battery is most important for applications like electric vehicles. Energy tells me how much work I can do. In an electric vehicle, the energy estimate informs me as to how far I am able to drive before I must recharge the battery pack. In this illustration, we can compare the amount of energy in a battery to the amount of soda in a glass as an analogy. When a battery is fully charged, there's a lot of available energy, and when the battery is fully discharged, there's no available energy. It's the same with the glass. When the glass is full, there's a lot of soda in it. When the glass is empty, there's no soda in it. Energy is a total quantity, talking about a total amount of work that we can do. We can contrast that with the concept of power. Power is the rate of energy usage. Knowledge of how much power is available in the immediate future is most important for applications like hybrid electric vehicles. This information tells me whether I can accept recharge energy quickly or whether I can provide energy quickly to accelerate. In the example, power is illustrated by the straw. If the straw has a wide diameter, then we can extract soda quickly from the glass. If the straw has a narrow diameter, we can extract soda only slowly. So energy and power are like soda and a straw. Both power and energy estimates are important for applications like extended range electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles because they need to know how far they can drive, but they also need to know how quickly they can accelerate and decelerate. It turns out that no sensor exists that's able to measure the available energy or the available power. Instead, we must create methods to estimate the amount of energy and power. And in order to estimate energy, we must know at least all of the cell states of charge and all of the total capacities of the cells in the battery pack. To estimate power, we must know at least all the cell states of charge and all of the resistances of the cells in the battery pack. But it turns out that we cannot measure these properties directly either. No sensor exists that can measure state of charge or capacity or resistance directly. So we must find ways to estimate these values. And the diagram on this slide shows the overall process. To the right of the diagram, we see the desired outputs of how much energy and how much power might be available from the battery pack. In order to come up with these estimates, we need to know all of the capacities of the cells, denoted as Q, and we must know all of the states of charge of all of the cells, and we must know all of the resistances of all the cells, denoted by R. Once we have these values, we can perform deterministic calculations to arrive at how much energy and how much power are available. But we can't measure state of charge or capacity or resistance directly, so we must somehow come up with values for these quantities using things that we can measure. The available inputs include cell voltages and battery pack current and either cell or module temperatures. So we use those basic measurements with computer methods called algorithms to come up with estimates of capacity and state of charge and resistance. And those estimates then feed the power calculations, and in the end, we're able to compute the estimates of energy and power that we require. It turns out that there are both good methods and poor methods to produce estimates. There's not only one way to do it. 
The simplest methods are usually, unfortunately, the least effective methods also. And there are some impacts to implementing a poor estimator. One of these could be an abrupt correction when a voltage or a current limit is exceeded. For example, if a battery management system in a vehicle tells the vehicle control computer that 50 kilowatts of power is available, and then that vehicle draws that power to start accelerating, but then the battery management system says, oh, sorry, I was wrong, that's too much power, my cell voltages are now too low, what's going to happen? Uh, one thing could be that the battery management system or the vehicle control computer decides to simply cut off power to the vehicle in order to protect the battery pack. But that would be an enormous safety concern. And the customer furthermore would develop some perception that the vehicle exhibits poor drivability and would be very unlikely to purchase your product again in the future or to recommend it to someone else. Another alternative when uh, a bad estimate has been made and the battery management system says, oh no, the voltages are too low, is to just accept that condition and keep on operating. Uh, even though it's causing some damage to the cells, we're still allowing the vehicle to use energy from the battery pack in order to accelerate because I promised the vehicle that it was able to do so. Um, this might be less of a, an immediate safety concern, but it does cause damage to the cells, which is an undesirable consequence. So the most common approach to compensate for uncertainty introduced by poor battery management system estimation algorithms is to over-design the battery pack by putting in too much capacity for the application and then by derating the estimates of energy and power that we tell the host application in order to ensure that we never overcharge or over-discharge the battery cells. So as an example, if I calculate that there is 50 kilowatts of power available, but I don't trust my estimate, I might multiply that value by a factor like 0 0.8 and then tell the vehicle that, oh, there's only 40 kilowatts of power available. So clearly, um, we're not using the entire capacity of the battery pack if I do that um, very often. So all of these responses to using a poor estimation algorithm have costs in dollars or euros or whatever currency and costs also in weight and volume if I need to add more battery cells than are really required by the application. Uh, so we'd really prefer to do a better job of creating estimates. And you might wonder why there's a picture of this gentleman on the slide. His name is Rudy Kalman. K-A-L-M-A-N, and he was the inventor of a technology known as the Kalman filter. Kalman filters turn out to be the optimal way of estimating the internal state of some dynamic system when we have the ability to measure only the inputs and outputs of that system. And in the third course in the specialization, we're going to spend a lot of time investigating this method called Kalman filtering and you're going to learn all about it and you're going to learn how to implement the Kalman filter and some of its variations uh, that work for nonlinear systems such as battery cells and you'll learn how to apply the extended Kalman filter and the sigma point Kalman filter or the unscented Kalman filter uh, to estimate battery cell state of charge and when we get to course three, it will take a few weeks to learn how to do this, but the outcome will be that you will know how to perform state estimation so much better than can be done using some of these ad hoc poor methods. And you'll learn how to find the near optimal solution for estimating state of charge of battery cells. So to summarize this lesson, you've been reminded that applications need to know at least two principal quantities about the battery pack how much energy is available and how much power is available in the near future. Unfortunately, we are not able to measure these quantities directly and so we must estimate them based on knowledge of states of charge and capacities and resistances of cells in the battery pack. Again, these quantities also are not things that we can measure directly and so we must estimate their values using measured quantities like cell voltage and, and battery pack current and temperatures. 
The major premise of this entire specialization on algorithms for battery management systems is that investing some time learning about good battery management system algorithms and by investing some money on good battery management system electronics and algorithms can ultimately lead to a reduced battery pack size and result in considerable cost savings when building a battery management system and selling many quantities of it. In the second course in the specialization, you will learn how to create mathematical descriptions or models of battery cells that are needed by these algorithms. In the third course, you will learn about advanced methods for state of charge estimation, including Kalman filtering. In the fourth course, you will learn about state of health estimation, which will allow you to compute estimates of battery cell capacity and resistance. And finally, in the fifth course of the specialization, you will learn about how to balance a battery pack and how to estimate power limits. Over the remainder of this week, we'll talk about a preview of some of these. Uh, we can't go into depth until we do it in this sequence, but you will at least see ideas of the concepts involved that you will learn over the rest of the specialization.